Today is day seven of November, and I'm proud of us, mostly me. Anyways, what you're looking at on the side here is what's called a double pendulum, and what you'll notice is even though each one of these starts at a similar position, as you play this, they're gonna get more and more out of sync until there's just no resemblance between them, and we call this kind of behavior a chaotic system. And this is relevant because the prompt for day seven is chaotic. We're gonna do the usual drill, geometry nodes, get rid of everything. So we're gonna start with a, a single pendulum, and then we're gonna add another. In other words, we're gonna have a mass that is subject to gravity, and also subject to the constraint that it has to maintain its length here. I'm gonna start off with a point and put it on x is equal to one, and to animate the simulation zone as always. And I've done this setup so many times now that I'm just gonna kind of speed through it. So we are gonna store two vectors, a for acceleration, make that a bit negative. The second one's gonna be called v for velocity. You'll remember is going to be equal to itself, plus the vector of acceleration. So every frame the velocity is updating, put that in there. We are going to set position by the offset of the velocity. When we play this, we now have gravity. I'm not getting tired of saying that over and over again, believe me. Okay, so we got gravity, but it's not respecting our distance constraint. We're gonna need to make sure it's following our constraint. And actually, because it's a radius of one, the constraint's super easy. No matter where the dot is, the radius should be equal to one, which is just a fancy way of saying normalize the vector. Send it through a vector math and make it normalize. And now we got a pendulum that is, I wouldn't say it's swinging. <laughs> Basically on every frame, it's affected by gravity. And then it's math to the point where it would actually end up on the pendulum. This process kind of keeps repeating until we get over here, and it's not going to go any further because it doesn't have any momentum, right? There's just gravity. You've also seen me do this, but it's good for you to know. We're going to make an attribute called old. This is going to be equal to the position before we do our transformation and also our constraint. Update the velocity to equal the new position minus the old position. In other words, with just a simple like change, check this out. Now this thing has a sense of momentum, even the fact that it's like dampening, which you wouldn't expect because we didn't put that term in, but I do want it to conserve a bit more more momentum. And if we're using this method, which I think is called Verlet integration, we're going to add more steps to this. So I'm going to divide gravity by two. Actually, before I do that, let's play the simulation. And you see, it doesn't go much higher than like here. And then when I take gravity and divide it by two and everything else is the same, you're going to see that the simulation goes a bit higher. If I now divide the gravity by four, let's see what this gives us. So it's going to simulate for a very long time, but now you can see it's going higher and higher and higher, but I'm okay with a bit of dampening and connected to this pendulum. We need another pendulum, which you can imagine is almost the exact same calculation, but we treat this point as if it was on the origin. So we're just kind of like duplicating the setup. This means we're going to need two points and I'm going to position them on the X axis using this as the position. Make sure there's a count of two and I'm going to take the index and I'm going to add one to it. The first one is going to have X is equal to one. Zero plus one is one. And the second one's going to have X is equal to two, but we're not seeing that specifically this normalization shouldn't be applying to everything because now our points are overlapping. They both get snapped to the same vector. So all we need to do is we need to say check where the index is equal to zero. In other words, it's our first point, And now we see both of them where one of them is a pendulum and the other one's not connected to anything. All we need to do is add one more constraint. We're basically going to copy the same thing, except this time we're going to check where the index is not equal to zero. In other words, it's equal to one. And then for the position, we're not going to normalize it, but we're going to normalize it in the sense of our previous point. So we're going to evaluate at index. Index is equal to zero, and we care about the position vector. And what I want to know is the position of our second point minus the position of our first point. So in other words, we now have this vector. I want to make sure this vector has a magnitude of one, and then we're going to add it to the first position. Take the subtraction, we normalize it, and then finally we take take this and we add on the position of our first and just make that the position. You can see that there's a double pendulum and it's behaving in kind of a complicated way from the get go. So you can see sometimes it kind of stays on one side and it doesn't have the energy in some sense to go over to make it play faster. Let's increase our frame rate. So now you can see this thing at speed. Remember, we kind of started it off in the perfect condition and there's no reason we couldn't have like lowered the pendulum a little. By the way, anything we set here is going to perfectly keep the constraints. So if I make this a bit lower, you can see it's going to behave a bit differently. And we can see that if we actually add in two pendulums, everything here, control G to make that a group and the simulations kind of given me a purplish red vibe, maybe something closer to blue. And there's no reason we can't just take it and like duplicate it. And the only thing we're going to change here is the initial condition so that maybe it starts off a bit higher. And now when we play this, it's actually going to simulate both of them kind of independently because they don't have anything to do with each other. And you can see immediately they're completely out of sync. This is why we consider this a chaotic system where I'm just going to vary our initial condition a little, join these together. This one can be two times lower and then this one can be three times lower. So you can see we're kind of getting a spectrum here, which is what the original render was kind of about. And again, even though they start off basically the same way, you're going to see that the divergence happens pretty quickly. One other thing I want to mention is right now, these both have radius one. There's no reason you can't take one of them and make it like 50% closer. In fact, all I need to do is after this normalization, and this is how customizable it is, I'm going to scale it and pick a number that isn't one. Let's make it 0.5 for a nice clean number. So just multiply this by 0.5. And then we are again going to add one because when this is zero, we get zero plus one, which means we have a distance of one. And when this is equal to one, we get 1.5. So let's play this and see what happens. And yep, they are like much more momentous in a sense. And before we finish this out, let me just show you how you would kind of set up my render without going through every detail. I'm going to start with a curve line that should have exactly three points.
points. And that's because we have our origin, the first point and the second point. And then literally all we need to do is set position. We're going to snag it from our simulation. So sample the index of our simulation, match the index to the index. And then we are going to sample the position at every index, connect that to the position. And let's view this. It almost gives us the correct thing, but you can see it's like pretty much inverted. And I believe that's because the index zero is here, whereas it should be here. In other words, just take the index and subtract one. And now this behaves like a, a double pendulum where we can give this thickness using a curve to mesh. And now we got our like bars. And for the actual pendulum segments, I'm going to instance from the simulation. And what I'm going to instance is a UV sphere, which we can join with our pendulum, make this smaller. And now you can see this is our setup. I basically did this a bunch of times. We're just going to take this input and kind of make it one. And we can literally take all of this and again, control G to make it a node group, make a few duplicates of these, one for each simulation. And then you just join all of them together. And then at the end, I just kind of gave them different colors and stuff like that. But that is the double pendulum. So that was a pretty fast one, which I deserve. I've been grinding away. As always, one file in the description. You can join Patreon and get all 30 for every single day I'm doing this. I've noticed a lot of people have been joining recently. Thank you. Thank you. And the prompt for tomorrow. Let's see. The prompt for tomorrow is cooking. That can really go any direction. Make sure to subscribe to both default cube and CG matter. I'm alternating where I upload, which is why you might have missed some and we'll do cooking tomorrow.